All right, so today's project is ripping up this ground. I'm a big believer in the no-till system, but I don't have years and years to develop this ground with uh, cover crops to get this ground to open up. We have a lot of problems with caliche out here in Arizona. What that basically is, it's just like the, the salts and the calcium and the lime or you know all, all the stuff that make up caliche. Um, they get leached down through the soil, they eventually stop, and then they just keep coming down and down and compacting over time, and they turn into basically a, a natural concrete. The problem with that is that once that layer forms, it's not just a hard pan, it's a concrete layer of hard pan um, and roots just hit it and then they start going sideways because they cannot just they cannot penetrate through it even these big trees we got a lot of uh, arizona cypress and elm tree elm trees around our property a lot of their roots kind of go down maybe about a foot and then they just shoot out they should be going a little bit deeper than that even like the elm trees a lot of their roots are kind of like on the surface not the best thing you know roots are supposed to be underground not on top of it but they just can't really dig deep until they get really big and even then they, they kind of shoot out the main problem with that is up here where we live we get a lot of heavy winds if your trees don't root deeply enough they just get toppled over and so in springtime up here you know we've only been here a couple months but we kind of moved in spring and we were looking in uh, late winter early spring and it was just windy every single day up here and it seems to be a huge problem. Now that the summer and the heat has come in, we kind of get a light breeze, but not the huge winds. Uh, we have a big problem with wind and fruit trees. So a lot of people think that we can't even grow fruit trees up here. We might not be super successful. So we're gonna start with this kind of half acre-ish, about a quarter or half acre, something like that, and, and, and kind of see how it goes. And then we will grow from there if we can make it happen. So that's why we have kind of the trees over here. We got trees over here, some bushes and trees, and more is gonna get planted to help protect the orchard from the heavy winds because uh, the winds just blow off all the blossoms and then we can get like a hard freeze that will kill everything so we got to figure out how to get around that but I'm sure there's a way I just got to find out but anyways we're opening up the soil to kind of break up that layer and get a lot of water in right now ripping the soil and we're gonna kind of leave it if you look at this side it's a lot of landscaping rock pebbles basically weed fabric that we're still scraping up over here, I've already scraped the majority of it. Once we're done, ribboning it through, I'm gonna let it kind of rain for a season or you know, several weeks so the water can kind of get in, penetrate, level us off. And then we're gonna throw a bunch of compost and wood chips and everything on. And we're gonna till that all in and then plant a kind of winter cover crop. It's not, I mean, it's August. We're kind of really late to do this, but we moved here at the end of May. We had a lot of stuff to do. This is the soonest we could kind of get this project done. Um, and then early next spring is when we want to start planting some trees in this area. So we got to do what we can in, in our time frame. Um, but I'm going to get some shots of me ripping up where we're going to put the greenhouse because we don't need to go as deep, but I'm still going to rip it. I got to get some of the roots out of the way. Just open up the soil some so organic matter can go in. There's a lot of nutrients in the soil because of the previous tree farm that used to be here. I was talking to our compost supplier and he would just overwater all of his potted plants where he had them. A lot of those nutrients just went straight into the soil, but there's no organic matter. So, you know, there's no real life in the soil yet. So that's what we're trying to do is trying to get organic matter through the wood chips, manure, compost. Eventually we'll be able to do some leaf mold and just regular leaves and, and pine needles and whatever else we can just get in. And then the cover crop, really try to drive roots down and, and see what we can open up and get life in so next year when we start growing stuff um, hopefully we'll do a lot better than if we just started trying to plant stuff in here right now it's not going to survive so let's get some working shots and then you can see over time just how this property kind of develops so uh got a cloud over that sun um, so as you can see we tilled everything up or not tilled we ripped everything up with the subsoiler we got about a foot down which is good enough this is just the vegetable area kind of where we ripped is gonna be the greenhouse so those are the real big cash crops and stuff like that so we want to get that as best on this side 
we'll be doing kind of like perennial stuff like I'm, I'm guessing lavender is gonna go here and then on the other side you know who knows what we're gonna do so uh, the first greenhouse is 16 feet wide by 100 feet long we're gonna have another one and so the main reason to rip this up is to really open up the ground because it's it's just rock hard over here um, and so when we want to plant right away and get a lot of production especially with things like carrots and stuff we need this ground to be opened and loosened so we ripped it and now we're going to start spreading some compost and wood chips let it rain a couple times as it starts to settle back down we'll throw probably a little bit more compost on it till it all up kind of smooth it all out and break up the chunks on the surface incorporate that compost and then we're going to seed this whole thing with the cover crop and then let that go through the winter uh, we'll build the greenhouse just the frame part next spring when we start to plant we'll put the uh, plastic cover on top so this helped kind of open up that ground for us and then after this we'll be no-till we're not going to till this anymore which is great because i was able to borrow the uh, subsoiler from my neighbor right here so now i don't have to buy it because i'm only going to use it this first year you know maybe in, in the back pasture or something i'll use it but i really don't need it after that so saved me two three hundred bucks about three hundred bucks yep so that's it. If you guys have any questions, uh, if you saw me working on this and I didn't do something right, or if my spacing is too close or not far enough or whatever, you know, put those in the comments. I don't know what I'm doing. This is the first time I ever, actually this is the first time I hooked something up to the tractor. It's the first time I used this. It's the first time I'm doing this. So, you know, I'm just going off of YouTube videos and learning and books and stuff like that. So. I think this is going to be good enough, you know, and again, after this, we're no-till. I'm not really worried about the roots that we ripped up because all of these trees are coming out in, in this particular area. So, yep, that's it. It's getting hot. Almost time to pick up the kindergartner after his second day of school. Pretty stoked. But yeah, time to start spreading some compost and uh, see you guys on the next video.